Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first off-season chat with Pacific Men's Basketball. My name is Zach Beirudi, and I'm joined by our student athletes today, Jack Williams and Anthony Towns. And the, the subject of today's discussion will be the Gonzaga Bulldogs, because obviously a, a pretty magical run for Gonzaga. It marked the first time uh, since 1957 that a WCC team made the national championship game, going all the way back to, to USF. In, in 1957 and we have some unique perspectives from our student athletes because obviously you guys faced Gonzaga three times and I think there's a lot to be be gleaned from that in many ways so I, I first want to ask uh, Jack Williams you know what what do you think enabled Gonzaga to get through a field of 68 teams to be one of the two remaining teams along with North Carolina and by the way for the sake of context we're filming this the day after uh, Gonzaga lost to North Carolina barely last night, so uh, that that's our, our framework here. But what enabled Gonzaga to do what they did in the tournament, Jack? Um, I would say a couple things. I think as a, like a unit, you could tell they were really close, and they had like a chemistry and like a click sort of as the, as the tournament started that other teams didn't have. Um, I think Williams Goss, he was a really good leader for them, and you kind of tell uh, when things would go wrong, they'd get the ball in his hands, he'd kind of take over the game or get his teammates right. Um, Collins off the bench too was huge for them. He, you could tell he was an X factor that other teams didn't have, but I think all those factors like really helped them in the tournament. I'm gonna ask Anthony kind of the same question. And uh, you know, you, you probably saw all the games they played in the tournament. There were some that were, were really close. I mean, the West Virginia game, I guess comes to my mind, but what do you think allowed them to survive those close situations? What, what was their X factor from what you saw? To me, I feel like their production off the bench, you know, because mm -hmm. when they would sub like a guy out, you know, the you would think like the level of intensity would like decrease, but I feel like all the players on the bench they know their roles and they stick to their roles, and I feel like that was the X factor for them. Start with with you for this one. What was the most difficult aspect of preparing for them when you guys had to prepare? Because you guys had to play them three times. It was the home and home, and then the conference tournament. Obviously, it was a lot to prepare for. But what, what was the most difficult in your mind, for, for, from your perspective? For me, I feel like it was the just trying to contain Karnowski mm. inside, you know, because he's a big load down there mm. and he's a very smart player. So you just got to, like, either you're going to double him or you're just trying to, like, push him, force him off, of, like, the paint, you know, try to get him out of his comfort zone, you know, because I feel like that's a big deal for him. And then when it comes to Nigel Goss, you know, he's a very pen good penetrator, always looking, going for the rim. So he's trying to contain him, you know, keep him on, try to keep him on the left side and just try to go over screens and try to keep the pressure on him. Karnowski had a you know, a subpar game by his standards last night. But did you see anything that North Carolina did to get him uncomfortable? Yes, the, the little things that you, you like, well, you see in the games, like they would like push him off, you know, like in his comfort zone, where he's using that like that left hook off. Mm -hmm. It was just falling really short off the rims, like slightly. So it was just like, I feel like that was like that little things, you know, like inside there, that was just getting to him and that was able to have a good game. Uh, go back to you, Jack. Zach Collins obviously got in some foul trouble last night. Uh, he ended up fouling out of the game, but, but you know, you're a similar type of, of player in that you can play inside, you can play outside, kind of a, a mismatch if you can use that way. Um, what was it like playing against him, and, and how much did his absence kind of impact Gonzaga down the stretch last night? Yeah, I'd say uh, playing against him, it was a good challenge. One thing I didn't realize how tall he is. Um, I'm like 6'9 in shoes. He was for sure like 7 feet. Mm -hmm. So you're out there. Um, it's tough going against a guy that big. He's got a lot of length, and just like stuff people might not even talk about. I think he had six blocks in the final in this final four game. And his impact, I think without them, I don't think they would have got that far at all. Maybe they're sweet, sweet 16, but without him, I don't think they can get that far for sure. I'll start with you here. You guys actually played Gonzaga really well, uh, at least for halves at a time. Yeah, uh, you, sure. at the time, uh, were the only team that led Gonzaga at the half, and that was on New Year's Eve when they, yep. when they came here to Stockton. You led them by six at the half. They hadn't trailed at the half until that point. And then you go to the conference tournament in Vegas. You guys kind of played them ugly in the first half, but it worked. Yep. You guys trailed only yep. by two. But yep. when you guys were playing them well, what were you doing to, to enable that to happen? Um, I think, for one, we were playing with confidence. Um, I remember when we were here, like, we just had a good rhythm. We were controlling the tempo. We weren't letting them get out in transition. We were kind of controlling the game, doing what we wanted. I'd say when we lost the lead in the second half, they were just getting in transition. We were turning the ball over. But I think if we play smart, we're right there with them. Anthony, I want to ask you the same question. When you guys were playing well against Gonzaga, what did you notice that Pacific was doing well? I feel like we were attacking the offensive boards and defensive boards. We weren't letting them get second chances on the offensive side that they usually 
are common to get, and, and also the, like Jack mentioned, the transition threes that they used to get with a lot of good shooters that they have, we're not letting them get that as much. Obviously, they set a standard uh, by getting to the national title game this year. Uh, when you face a team of that caliber, does that illustrate what maybe it takes to get to that next level? Definitely, because you see like all the hard work that they put in into it, and so it just makes you just want to work even harder, you know, because it shows like, oh, I can get, they can get there, then I can, do, and we can definitely get there. Jack, I want to go back to you with, with, with that question. What was going through your mind when you saw a team that you played three times in the national championship game last night? You, I mean, you shared the floor with these guys that were going for the ultimate prize. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy, you know, like thinking two, three years ago, I never would have thought like we could play with a team like to that standard. Mm -hmm. I think it goes to show you, they, you know, they put in a lot of work, as Ann said, and they deserve to be there, but we're not that far behind, you know. We play them tough uh, in certain halves, but we're not that far behind. We just got to keep working. I think we get to that standard. I feel that, that most people would agree that seasons like the one that Gonzaga just had, they're, they're started early in the offseason around this sure. time when, when nobody's looking. Yeah. What are you personally doing to, to get ready for yeah. next year to, to make a run at Gonzaga? Because everybody's going to be gunning for them next year. Yeah. I'm not only in the conference, but I think now, you know, whoever they play in the country. Yeah, well, right now, uh, as a team, we're focusing a lot on strength and conditioning. So we'll be in the weight room four to five times a week uh, doing everything you can imagine. And then uh, for conditioning, we'll be in the pool, we'll be in the sand pits, we'll be out running, any of that you'll find us doing. And, we're working really hard, and we got basketball workouts, of course, and open gym, and we're trying to be a lot more serious and be quick in and out, no more goofing off. You know, I think if we move forward, keep doing that, we'll be we'll be fine. Anthony, you got uh, you got a lot stronger going into this season, and I think it showed, and I think it surprised a lot of people. So, what's the next step for you physically in your preparation for next year? And like you said, yes, with me getting more stronger, I just feel like it starts paying more attention to detail in the weight room. You know, start taking it as more of a business and just start taking more seriously you know just trying to get my body right and for the upcoming season I just want to focus more just like on my legs upper body and as well as like just stamina in the games you know because it's playing a lot hopefully I'll be playing a lot of minutes in this upcoming season and so it's got to be ready be prepared last question and we'll start with Anthony what are you most looking forward to going into next season um, playing in Spano Center and just can't wait all these fans just win Jack what about you um, I would say bringing the winning culture back. Uh, I think last year we all kind of felt we were going to bring it back, and we didn't. But I think we got a right mindset going into this year. We got the right guys, and I think we can bring the uh, Pacific program back to winning and definitely want to make a uh, shot at the NCAA tournament and go for Gonzaga, St. Mary's, BYU, get wins against those because I don't think we got BYU uh, two years ago. But mm -hmm. besides Gonzaga and St. Mary's, I can't remember when we beat them last. So definitely those type of games, get those wins. I think it would be huge for us. Jack Williams, Anthony Sounds. Thanks, fellas. Looking Thank forward you. to next Thank season. You. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Pacific Digital Network.